In this section of our lecture, now we will talk about venous thromboembolism. Venous thromboembolism is uh, common during pregnancy because of uh, pressure on the uh, blood vessels and the veins and uh, there is a stasis of the blood flow. So all these uh, can lead to thromboembolism. So it's the common conditions which we will talk about in this section will be thrombophilia, deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolus and treatment and prevention of venous thromboembolism. So first, what is uh, thromboembolism? It's uh, common in pregnancy because uh, of hypercoagulable states. Pregnancy is hypercoagulable state, coagulation is more as a result of increased coagulation or clotting, there is formation of thrombus or blood clots. When these blood clots are formed, they cause obstruction to the blood flow and can lead to different complications and different signs and symptoms. So pregnancy is hypercoagulable state. There is again there in the pregnancy, there is alteration in thrombotic and fibrinolytic system. Thrombotic and fibrinolytic systems are the systems that can cause, uh, prevent the formation of blood clot by the uh, lysis of the blood clot. So if there is alteration in these two systems, there is uh, thromboembolism. Increase in clotting factors like factor 8, 9, 10 and fibrinogen levels. All these are different factors that can lead to thromboembolism during pregnancy. This is the diagram. Uh, this is the picture of deep vein thrombosis common in the legs. So a blood clot in deep vein in the legs, thigh or pelvis that block the flow of blood. So as a result of all these factors during the pregnancy, there is formation of blood clot in the deep veins of the legs. And when this clot, sometimes a small piece dislodges from this big clot and it flows in the circulation and cause obstruction in different parts of the body. If it goes to the lungs, it's known as pulmonary embolus. So dislodge of a piece of a clot or piece of blood clot is known as embolus or a flowing or moving clot is known as embolus. When it goes into the lungs, cause obstruction, cause pulmonary embolus, it's a bad condition leading to shortness of the breast. Uh, and then a blood clot blocking one or more vessels in the lung that frequently uh, originate from DVT. So this pulmonary embolus cause uh, dyspnea, uh, shortness of breath, and it should be managed urgently. Now this is the prevention of uh, deep vein thrombosis or thromboembolism after surgery. It's also common after surgery because patient is immobilized and they are on the bed. This can lead to uh, formation of blood clots in the veins. So undergoing, undergoing surgery and bed rest after surgery increases the risk of thromboembolism. Ways to help prevent include the following. Early mobilization is important. So early walking as soon as possible because staying on the bed for several days can increase the chances of thromboembolism. Then another is segment sequ sequential 
compression device these sequential compression devices are also very helpful they put pressure they prevent the thromboembolism and then blood thinner drugs are important to decrease the chances of forming uh, thrombo uh, thrombus so may receive blood thinning medication after surgery so all these are important steps to reduce the incidence of thrombus thromboembolism after surgery reduction in protein s and anti thrombin 3 concentrations is also responsible for uh, thromboembolism next condition is thrombophilia again it's a condition in which there is more thrombus formation blood formation and is known as thrombophilia changes in coagulation fibrinolytic system can be acquired or inherited so thrombophilia is a condition of increased blood clot formation again in this diagram you can see there is blood clot this blood can cause dislodge and cause embolus in the lungs deficiencies of endogenous endogenous anticoagulant protein c as an antithrombin factor 3 are responsible for thrombophilia associated with antiphospholipid syndrome so thrombophilia is a condition which can be congenital or acquired due to deficiency of factor uh, protein c protein s and antithrombin 3 and associated with antiphospholipid syndrome deep vein thrombosis dvt again is um, uh, uh, pain in the calf with varying degrees of redness or swelling so dvt or deep vein thrombosis very common after surgery we already talked about it this can lead to swelling and pain in the calf muscles here this is the normal leg this is the leg with dvt becomes all swollen and red so there is inflammation below the blockage site very painful condition diagnosis is a uh, compression ultrasound is performed it has high sensitivity and specificity for compression ultrasound then venography which is more invasive it require injection of contrast medium and use of x rays so two uh, methods are used one is ultrasound then venography it's invasive procedure because of injection of contrast medium that gives the picture where the obstruction is present and then that obstruction is dislodged by different procedure to relieve the condition or anti coagulant drugs are used pulmonary embolus is uh, dislodging of the uh, blood clot and causing obstruction of pulmonary blood vessels there is breathlessness or inspi inspiratory inspiratory chest pain so this is common in pulmonary embolus tachycardia fast heartbeat and uh, fever is also present in pulmonary embolism initial uh, ecg or electrocardiogram chest x-ray and arterial blood gases are performed to find out the level of gases in the pulmonary vessels 
वेंटिलेशन परफ्यूजन स्कैन और कंप्यूटेड टोमोग्राफी पलमनरी एनजियोग्राम इज ऑल्सो परफॉर्म सो दीज आर सम ट्रीटमेंट ऑप्शन यूज फॉर पलमनरी एम्बोलिज्म ई सी जी चेस्ट एक्स रे आर्टीरियल ब्लड गैसेज बिकॉज ऑफ पुअर वेंटिलेशन दिस शुड बी परफॉर्म एंड देन वेंटिलेशन परफ्यूजन स्कैनिंग then treatment of uh, venous thromboembolism treatment is um, it can be low molecular weight heparin is the treatment of choice for venous thromboembolism so treatment of choice is low molecular weight heparin is the medicine that is used in tra, uh, in the vas by injection and it can cause dislodging of the uh, blood clot other that can be used is direct oral anticoagulants can be used warfarin can also be used and the mechanism of action of warfarin is it reduces the level of vitamin k which is used for uh which is used by different clotting factors so level of vitamin k if decreased then clotting won't occur and then in low molecular weight heparin specially preferred in patients with cancer and require daily injections pregnancy pre prevention of uh, thromboembolism in pregnancy and in postpartum period which is the period after pregnancy how it can be prevented a blood clot um, uh, is one of the in one of the large vein usually in a person's leg or arm is called deep vein thrombosis or dvt when blood clot like this form it can partly or completely block the blood flow so if a dvt is not treated it can move or break and travel to the lungs so important um, important uh, of uh, early treatment during the pregnancy because of pressure dvt is common during pregnancy so all the it should be treated fast because it can cause pulmonary embolism and that can have very very serious effects especially during the pregnancy know the risk factors it's important to know the risk factors that can lead to dvt cancer hospitalization and surgery and pregnancy these are the major risk factors for deep vein thrombosis blood clots usually can be prevented by uh, knowing the risk and looking for signs and symptoms tell your doctor if you have factors for blood clot uh, risk factors for blood clot before any surgery talk with your doctor about blood clots and see your doctor soon so all these uh, measures should be taken to recognize the uh, deep pain thrombosis if there is pain if there is swelling in the leg that should be uh, noticed and let your doctor know so pain redness these are important signs and symptoms of deep vein thrombosis tenderness pain temperature is high usually pyrexia is common because of inflammation so that was all about section 4 in which we talked about thromboembolism in detail so thank you for watching scardia.com